Hey, hello everyone. I am live. Let me see here. The volume is set. Should be working. The video is going. I can see my face. Let me know in the chat. Can you see my face? Hello. Okay, I've got some people hopping on already. David just asked, will I be leaving the live posted so you can watch it later in the day? Absolutely. I'm going to leave this on my channel for quite a while because I'm really excited about this and I think it's going to help a lot of people. So that'll be really fun. Sean and Shayna already hopped in. Acrylic Diva, love your title. Just got my nails done yesterday. I like them short, but kind of fun. Awesome. Someone here already. Oh, fabulous. Thank you so much for joining. Nicole, nice to see you again. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Oh, they can hear and see me. Okay. We are good. I know it's like just now 10 o'clock. I'm going to grab my water really quickly. Hang on one second. There it is. All right. I rarely talk like this long in a row, like probably only a couple of times a month when I do these lives and workshops. So I wanted to make sure I'm ready. I've got my water. I've got my sparkling water. I'm good to go. <laughs> this should be a lot of fun. Hi, Tony. Hi, Shelly. Katie. So awesome. I am really excited to share this today. So if you're one of my email subscribers, you're already well aware that I am not even low key, just like super obsessed with using AI. I've had a few people reach out to me lately saying, wow, you're making so much content. How are you doing all this? What's going on? And the truth is I have finally learned how to incorporate AI into my workflow and my work process. It's helping me write blog posts. It's helping me come up with tutorial ideas. It's helping me write emails and landing pages and social media content. And it is amazing. But the thing is, it took me a couple of months to get here because I had to learn how to communicate with this robot, okay? So AI, it's a language model and it learns what we're teaching it, but I had to learn too. So that's why I'm doing this workshop. There are two different ways that I like to consider using AI. One of them is what we're focused on today. And that is how to use it to generate content for a website. I thought it would be a super fun challenge to build an entire Squarespace website using ChatGPT. And uh, to be honest, I have never done an entire site before. This is brand new. I wanted to try to do some last night for practice, but I got way too distracted writing emails and also watching the movie Dread because I hadn't seen it in a while. And it was finally on HBO. So I watched it. I really should have worked instead. But here we are. <laughs> so we're going to do this together. So I'm really excited to share this with you. And the other aspect of using AI that I want to talk about is using it to help your own workflow, either as a website creator or as a website designer. Maybe you're a full time Squarespace designer. There are things we can do with AI as a business to make our lives so much easier. That content I'm saving for my workshop next Friday. So if you want to learn more about it, inside the square.co forward slash try AI, that's going to be a lot more focused on the workflow. But this right here, this is about content. I think that AI is going to be a game changer for bridging the gap between the idea of what we want on a website or what our client sends us and what we actually put on there. So we're going to be using chat GPT to create a whole website, got some slides, Super stoked. Thank you so much for joining. I'm getting some great comments here. I've saved some time at the end for a Q&A. So if you have any questions while I'm talking, pop them in the chat. I'll try to scroll through and grab those later. If I don't get to it ahead of time or like during this presentation, I've set aside the next hour of my own schedule once this is over and I'll hop back in the chat and comment on your comments. So if I don't get to your question live, don't be discouraged. This video is going to stay up and I will pop in there and answer them. So, all right, enough about this. Let's get into the slides. First, most important slide, legal information. I'm not affiliated with, uh, sorry, the term Squarespace is a trademark of Squarespace Incorporated. ChatGPT was created by OpenAI, an American artificial intelligence research laboratory consisting of the nonprofit OpenAI Incorporated. This content is not affiliated with either one of them, okay? So I don't work for Squarespace. I don't work for OpenAI. This is just me, Becca Harpain, from inside the square, talking about how to use these. So here's all the legal information, all of this content subject to change. Have any questions? Let me know. Send me an email. Okay. Legal stuff done. One of my best friends is a lawyer. You're welcome, buddy. All right, here we go. <laughs> here's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to give you a quick intro about AI, like what chat GPT can do and what it can't. And then we're going to be creating a website using prompts specifically for Squarespace prompts that I've created based on my research. Then we're going to do some Q&A. Ask me anything about the process. You can pop it in the chat while I'm talking or save it for the end. I'm going to try to scroll through and grab those questions and answer them. But if I don't get to you live, I'll answer you later. So definitely pop it in there. 
and the next steps. We're going to talk about what you can do to use AI to make your job easier. So really quickly, if you don't know me, which would be kind of weird because you're on my YouTube channel, you've probably seen my face at least once or twice, but my name's Becca Harpain. I teach people how to create and customize their Squarespace websites with my tutorials and my workshops here on YouTube and at InsideTheSquare.co. I try to host a live workshop every single month. I actually missed one last month because I had so many things going on, but here we are in April. This is one of two workshops I'm doing this month, so I'm really excited to be sharing this one. This here is a live on YouTube, so thanks for joining me. If you want to learn more about my Squarespace stuff and all the cool things I can teach you, visit InsideTheSquare.co. All right, let's get into this. Let's explain ChatGPT. Now, I'm using ChatGPT, but there are tons of other AI programs out there. One that I've used in some of my past work is known as Jasper. Jasper.ai is very cool. Canva has its own called Magic Write. Google has released Bard. Bing has its own platform as well, or Microsoft, I should say. There are all kinds of language models out there. But what we're focused on this one, or what we're focused on in this live, is ChatGPT. That's a free one that's open AI, accessible to everybody, and that's what we're focused on. So here's a quick overview. ChatGPT is a program and it's trained on tons of text from the internet, from books, basically any digital content that's out there to learn how to write how humans talk and write. So when you ask it a question or give it a prompt, like a statement, it uses its smarts to generate text that sounds just like something a human would say. Those two paragraphs, ChatGPT wrote that. <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? I thought it was kind of neat. So this program is trained to write in a way that we're going to understand. It literally is there to chat. When I first started using it, I thought it was more like a search engine. I kind of treated it like Google. And I was like, give me five titles for X, Y, and Z topic blog post. And then I would just leave it at that. When I realized later on, I can actually engage with this chat bot and that is going to make it learn even more. I can give it prompts about using adjectives and tone of voice. One of my favorites is to tell it to act as if. I can say something like, act as if you're a website designer trying to encourage a client to provide more content. What email would you write them? Totally an option right there. And from that, you can say, rewrite this to sound more casual and include at least three emojis. Okay, I kind of overuse emojis, but you could totally throw that in there. There are lots of cool ways to work with this AI because it's constantly learning. And if you take away anything from this live today, it's that AI is constantly learning. Okay, so what it can do. It can help you create content. It can help you do research. I've got some really cool prompts about that. It can help inspire ideas. It can help suggest improvements on your content, which I really love. But what it can't do, it can't create code. I know this for a fact. It will share some code, but I've been playing around with it over the last few days or, well, few weeks about code-specific prompts. I've called it Chat GPT versus me. I'll post a playlist in the description of this video because it's been kind of fun. And out of the last five challenges, it's gotten the code wrong almost every single time. It's because it's learning. And that really does take us into a few of these other aspects here. Promise accuracy. I know I just skipped over emotions. We'll get back to that one. ChatGPT and other AI language models cannot guarantee that they are correct because they don't know the sources that they're pulling from. They're pulling from all kinds of content out there, and they might not be getting the most up-to-date and correct information. So do not rely on it to be 100% accurate. That's why it's great for inspiration and for content and a little bit of research. But you as a human, you need to dig further. It also can't properly understand emotions. It can understand tone, like if you use the adjective of, say, rewrite this title to be more casual, it will understand that tone. It will understand the concept of what witty means, but it can't generate its own joke. It can pull content from other jokes and try to make one, but it has no idea what the general concept of funny is. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. It also can't replace humans. This is super important to know. You don't need to be worried about it because it cannot replace us and our processing. Part of that's the emotions. Part of that is our need for accuracy. Part of that are just the nuances and keeping updated with things like how to properly install code on a website. That's one where I seem to keep winning when it comes to chat GPT versus me. So that's kind of interesting. So I want to assure you that AI won't replace the need for Squarespace designers. Absolutely will not. But it can make you more productive 
than ever before. And that's what we're going to get into today. How to use this to build a website. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to use AI to build this website? And I see here that someone just popped in asking, which AI program do I think is best for this process? There are pros and cons to all of them. I've really enjoyed using Jasper um, AI, sorry, Jasper AI, J-A-S-P-E-R. That's been a lot of fun, but I've learned to write prompts for chat GPT, and it seems to be perfect for my own needs. Now, there are tons of programs out there. That's just the one we're focused on today. So not that clear of an answer, Tony, but I hope that helps. All right. So how are we going to use chat GPT, this icon right here? to build a website. We're going to start by asking it to help us define the site structure. Then we've got two different aspects here. After that, we're going to get into some of the design prompts. We're going to ask it about layout and imagery, and then we're going to get into content. We're going to ask it to help us create content for pages and metadata. That one has been huge for me. I've been using AI to help me create different metadata and optimize my older blog posts for search engine optimization. My organic rank has skyrocketed using it. That's been super fun. So that's some of the stuff that we're going to get into today. Okay. Now we're going to be working with prompts and we are creating a prompt. There are three rules that I like to adhere to, to be super duper clear, super duper specific, and to be playful. It likes to interact with you, to engage. So the last one I put on here is ask again and again and again. You can constantly ask it to refine, expand upon, elaborate a little bit more. And I'll show you in some real examples here how we can use it to really interact with us to make even more amazing content. And I just got a reminder from Sarah, if you're enjoying this presentation so far, be sure to hit that like button. I want to make sure that this content, this free content gets out to as many people who are interested in this as possible. So give me a like on this video, okay? And subscribe if you haven't already, but let's keep going. All right. It's not Q&A time yet. We're going to jump into this actual presentation here. So I want to create a brand new Squarespace website using ChatGPT. Are you ready? Are we going to do it? Should we get into it? Okay, I'm getting some yeses. Let's do it. Okay. So I have a blank website here. This is a blank Squarespace website. No pages, no content, absolutely nothing. Still says demo because I haven't even touched it. And what we're going to do, let's go back to our list here. We're going to start with site structure. And how are we going to do that? Some prompts. I have created an AI prompt cheat sheet based on my research. This cheat sheet is in a Notion database, and it has over 200 prompts that we're going to use to generate this website. So inside here, you can open up any of these, and they'll have prompts about all kinds of different stuff. Like, let's take a look at the homepage content prompt, different ideas of things that you can suggest. This is Ripley, by the way. She's here to help. Scoot over, sweetheart. There we go. All right. <laughs> so back to this cheat sheet here. Inside this prompt cheat sheet, I've got over 200 prompts that you can use to generate content, business specific ones too, but we're focused on website today, generate content for a website. And these are the ones we're going to be using for creating our site today. So we're going to start with site structure then design content and all kinds of other fun stuff. So for site structure, I've got a few prompts here. I think I have eight in this collection. Yeah, I've got eight different prompts. What we're going to do is design a website for a yoga studio based in Chicago that wants to get senior citizens to take their first yoga class. I know that's random and that's the point. I have no experience running a yoga studio in Chicago for senior citizens. That's what we're going to build a website for. If you're excited, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments if you're ready to go. Let's start with this prompt right here and let's modify it for that specific client. Inside chat GPT, I'm at chat.openai.com forward slash chat. I'm going to type this right here. And here, instead of business, we're going to say yoga studio. And this website's main goal is to encourage, uh, let me move something in front of my screen. There we go. Encourage the target audience. Let's see here. Senior citizens to book their first class in the Chicago, or just in Chicago. I didn't even say the Chicago area. We'll just say Chicago. So it's going to generate three different sitemaps. Let's see what it does. If something went wrong, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Let's refresh the page. <laughs> I think I had it quiet for too long. It doesn't like to be ignored. Let's try that again. Okay. We're going to do this for a yoga studio website. The main goal is to get target audience in this area. So the main goal is to get senior citizens i can spell properly take their first yoga class in 
Chicago. Chicago. There we go. <laughs> Let's send it that prompt. Okay, here's our first site map, our second and our third. Let's take a look. One other pro tip, as I've been using this, what I like to do is review it right here inside ChatGPT and then keep a Google Doc going with the information that I'm tracking. You can use Notion, Google, Microsoft Word, whatever you want to do. That's what we're going to do. So here are three options for a sitemap. Our first one, we've got home, about us, classes, locations, blog, FAQ, contact, book now. I like that. This one has yoga for seniors in the title and then locations. That's kind of interesting. Sitemap three, they gave us a local focus for this one. Chicago Studio, Yoga for Seniors. This one seems even more targeted. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? One, two, or three? I'm leaning towards sitemap three. Let's pull this one out. Okay, I'm seeing some threes. We're going to go for this one. We're going to pop this over here and take a look. We've got home, about us, classes, Chicago Studio, seniors, blog, FAQ, contact, and book now. This is perfect. Number three. All right, getting a lot of threes. Let's roll with that one. Okay, we've got our sitemap. Now, let's see if there are any missing pages. I love this prompt. It already gave us the sitemaps here. So I'm going to say using sitemap number three, identify three missing pages for a, we'll change business to yoga studio website. Let's see what it's got. Okay, it might be missing events, senior resources, community partners. That's pretty interesting. Let's see. I like the events, but over here, We've got the blog, local events for seniors. That's already there and resources there too. Okay, so again, this is why humans are pretty helpful. AI is like, oh, you might have missed this, but it actually got it. However, I like these descriptions. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to pop them into here. And this description here for resources, let's put it here. And for a resource idea, we can totally do community partners. So back here in our notes for resource idea. We've got that information about community partners. Okay, pretty darn cool. We've got some good stuff. Now let's get into some of the content about the design. I realized that was a slight spelling error because I use capital letters. There we go. So let's start with the color scheme and font pairs. Those are fun. But I also generated a prompt that covers both. This first one says create an adjective color combination for adjective website in the business type industry. So for this example, create a warm color combination for a modern website in the yoga industry. And this part is Squarespace specific. I want two dark colors, two light colors, and an accent color that meets WCAG standards when used together. That right there is a little accessibility prompt that you might not have thought of. That's one example of being specific with ChatGPT, being super clear on what we're asking it to do. Then the next one here, we've got font pairs. But I'm going to go ahead and use this last one. Can you suggest color schemes and font pairs that would work well for a website targeted towards blank, interested in blank? I want the colors to be this, make the fonts this, and make sure they're available in Google Fonts. Let's grab this one. All right. Let's pop this in here. See what ChatGPT has to say. Sure. Here's some color schemes. Look at how friendly it is. It's like, sure, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so we've got quite a few different color schemes that it's coming up with here and some cool fonts. I'm a big fan of Montserrat, so we might be using that one. We've got light gray, dark gray, and teal, cream beige and orange, pale, sage green, and yellow. Ooh, I'm kind of liking those fonts. I don't know. This is a tough one, but I do love teal. All right, let's go with color scheme number one, calm and soothing, okay? So again, I want to make sure that I mention we're using the target audience. We're using the type of content, the business that we're going for, and we're giving some really clear descriptions, like I want it to be legible. I want it to be available on Google Fonts because Squarespace and Google Fonts share the same database. There's lots of information that we can go for there to be really specific. So let's pop this back into our site build notes. We'll have a new section for design. And there we go. So we've got our primary, secondary accent and our font pair. Let's go ahead and add these to Squarespace. I'm going to hop into the design tab. I'm going to select site styles. And over here, we'll start with fonts. We want Montserrat for the heading and the body font is Noto Sans. So for headings, let's go for family and we'll select browse all fonts. <laughs> and here we'll type in Montserrat. There we go. I'm going to select that one and then heading back. And for weight, it's at 700, 700. There we go. And our secondary font for the paragraphs 
Let's hop into font family, select browse all fonts. Again, we're using any Google font here. We want no toes sends, there we go. And what was the size of that? 400 is the width. Okay, so back here for the font weight, we're gonna go 400. Our navigation updated, those are the fonts we're now using, pretty awesome. All right, let's hop into colors. Sarah just added not having to look up accessible colors myself. I'm in, I'm with you. That part can be really time consuming. So we've got light gray and dark gray and teal. Let's go ahead and start with this one back here in Squarespace. We'll go over to our color menu and I'm just gonna edit the entire palette. So we've got white and the light gray here. I'll pop light gray over there and then we'll grab our dark gray and back here in Squarespace, we'll replace this brown color with our dark gray. And for the accent color, we're using this teal. So I'm gonna grab this, pop right here and there is the accent color. And now our website color palette has been updated. Yep, pretty awesome. I just got a question from Lauren. Is the prompt cheat sheet available for download? Absolutely. You can access it anytime. This prompt cheat sheet is available if you go to inside the square.co forward slash try AI. There you can sign up for my workshop next Friday, but you'll get instant access to this prompt cheat sheet in the email. So you can start playing around with it right away. It's way too exciting to keep this to myself. I want to make sure you had access today. And it's all in there, including these prompts that we're using right now. All right, so we've got the color palette. We've got the font. Let's go back to our list here. We're talking about design. What else can we do? Footer design and page layout. Let's hop into there. Okay, so for footer design, we wanna go for a color combination. Actually, we already did color. We'll skip that one. Let's talk about page layout. I think I used the wrong ones. Let's go up here to our footer design examples. All right, which one of these prompts should we use? Let's see. Okay, how about... This one, design an adjective website footer that focuses on key information and elements for a business website. Let's do this. We're gonna say design a an easy to navigate website footer that focuses on key information and elements for a yoga studio website. This website, let's get more clear. Let's say this website is for senior citizens and should in, encourage them to book their first class, yoga class, let's be specific, highlight the location of Chicago. Let's see what it comes up with. Correct that spelling, there we go. Again, try to be clear, try to be specific, and try to be playful or fun using things like easy to navigate, something along those lines, encouraging them to. That's not saying explicitly state this call to action. That's saying encourage them to do this thing, which is pretty cool. So here it's saying, okay, let's include contact information, class schedule, book now, about us, testimonials, FAQ, and social media icons. Love it all. Let's pop this into our notes. Here we're going to say a footer, except I'll capitalize it like I did design because I'm a stickler for those kind of things. There we go. Here's what we're going to add for the footer. And let's go ahead and do that. We'll add a space for contact information, schedule, book now, about us, testimonials, FAQ, and icons. Let's go ahead and select done because we're done with the color palette. We can hop into edit mode. All right, and Tia said she'd love to be able to download the prompts or just have a copy of that Notion setup. Absolutely, you can copy that Notion setup anytime, duplicate it into your own template. I listed it in Notion because I wanna add to it constantly. <laughs> this gives us the ability. Uh, little side note, I've also updated my CSS cheat sheet into Notion and that's coming out pretty soon. Very excited about that. Okay, Squarespace is waking up. Let's hop into edit mode and let's add a footer. Now down here, if we select add section, we might have one that's already kind of similar to what we're going for. Um, this one looks pretty good right here. Let's go for this one. And if we scroll down, we want to use contact information, phone number, email address, and physical address. So phone number, email, and we'll just say one, two, three at Main Street, Chicago. I don't know why I picked Chicago. I think I went there like once when I was 10, but that's what we're working with today. So we've got that in there now. And then schedule, book now, about us and testimonials and FAQ. I'm going to go with schedule and we'll link this. We'll spell it correctly. Sorry about that. There we go. And we can link this to a page that will eventually be schedule. Apply that. About contact, we'll skip follow. We'll add those social media links like it suggested. What else did it suggest here? Book now, that sounds like a button to me. All right, let's go ahead and add a button. And here we'll make it primary. 
Let's go ahead and turn this button into the fit version because I like that better. We'll say book now and we'll say book. Let's make that the URL for our class. There we go. We can scoot that down here. And what else do we want to add? We've got testimonials and FAQ and then social media icons. I'm feeling the icons. Let's pop those in there. Social links. There we go. And let's say we've got facebook.com and we've got Instagram. Obviously, this is a fake business, so I'm not going to use like actual URLs, but Instagram and let's add what are other ones that senior citizens would use? What does my mom use? Um, let's do YouTube. Maybe they've got a few YouTube videos. <laughs> there we go. All right. And of course, as always with Squarespace, you can customize the heck out of this design pretty darn easily. We'll go ahead and go with those and we'll pop them down here at the bottom. And we've got some good details there. Now, again, it suggested FAQ and testimonials. I'm not really feeling like that's good foot or content. I feel like schedule, book now, about us. Those are pretty important. But I'm going to go ahead and remove those from its suggestion. And there we go. Now, I'm keeping all this information for when I write the proposal to the client in case they're wondering, why would you put that there? It's because it was a good idea. So this information can be really helpful to keep, again, in your own little build notes document. Okay, so we've got our footer done. That's awesome. Let's head back here to the prompt cheat sheet. And I wanted to create uh, some page layouts. Let's take a look at some layout prompts here. So for page layouts, these are pretty exciting. Um, we can talk about some design trends. We can talk about what are some effective ways to incorporate calls to action. Uh, common mistakes to avoid when designing a website layout for blank. Let's get some feedback from ChatGPT. What are some common mistakes to avoid when designing a website layout for a yoga studio? Let's see what it has to say. Cluttered layout. Okay, we've got to keep it clear. Complex navigation. We don't want that at all. Lack of clear call to action. Poor mobile responsiveness. Limited accessibility. Lack of important information. Poor visible visuals. This is really fascinating. I love how fast it wrote all of that stuff. I feel like even though we said yoga studio, this is pretty applicable to like any website out there. So that's pretty interesting. But good things for us to keep in mind. So let's make sure navigation's clear, our call to action is clear, mobile responsiveness, Squarespace has us covered there. The accessible color palette was important, but let's keep that there for all of our font as well. And make sure the information's important and the visuals are clear. And cluttered layout, I'm a big fan of minimal design. So let's go ahead and hop back into our website here and let's work a little bit on the actual design of the navigation. What do you think? All right, let's do it. So for the header, I think having a book now button at the very top is pretty important. We'll say book now, or maybe book a class. And I believe the URL we used for that was book. If not, correct me in the comments. We can get back to that one later. There we go. We'll go ahead and select save. Now back here inside the AI prompt cheat sheet, what else can we do here for a layout? Let's see. Um, how about this one? Key elements that every website layout for a business type should include. Let's do that. What are some key elements that every website layout for a yoga studio? Should include. Now we're not really adding any clarity or anything like that. And I think that's why we're getting these general responses. Okay. So compelling hero image, clear and easy use navigation. Class schedule is pretty important. About us, contact, testimonials. All right. We're getting a lot of standard things that we've seen before. So this is good. If any of this you want to really reiterate to your client or use in your proposal, pull this content out. But let's go back to our build notes here and let's take a look at this navigation we've got. So you've got home, about us, classes, studio, yoga, blog, all that fun stuff. All right, for our homepage, let's get into designing this homepage. I know I pulled out a specific prompt for that content that I loved. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. We're going to pull this prompt right here. We're going to say, suggest written content for the homepage of a yoga studio website. Include a headline, tagline, services, about, and a section for a contact form. Include an explanation of what the... of why the section or what the section is important. I'd say, I think that should be why the section is important. Again, got to be a human, not a bot. <laughs> and an example of the content, keep the tone of voice excited, casual, and confident. Let's also add, write this for senior citizens. There we go. In the Chicago area. Kind of sounds like a random prompt, but I have a feeling Chad GPT is going to surprise us. Let me pop this in here. All right, what have we got? Discover the joy of yoga at studio name where age is just a number. Oh, all of this is great. 
I love it. Why it's important. Look at all this amazing content it's creating for us. We're going to pull this into our build notes and see what we want to expand upon, okay? Awesome. It even tells us what form fields to add in there. Really great information. So much content. All right, let's go ahead and pull this stuff out. We're going to add this to our document, and then we're going to get ChatGPT to expand a little bit more, okay? So home page. What have we got? Let's scroll up here. So the headline, I love it. This right here sounds a little bit too, I don't know, that's okay. Maybe we can roll with that one. We can skip the why it's important. We already know. Here are some of the things that they're offering. This is awesome. Let's go with it. Okay. Back here inside our Yoga Studio website, let's work on our homepage. Let's add a banner section at the very beginning here. How about this one? All right. Here we're going to say discover the joy of yoga studio at, I'll make it bold, this studio. And we'll skip the where age is just a number. We want it to be targeted towards senior citizens, but gosh, I don't want to call them out that much. That seems kind of weird. We want to make sure that anyone interested in yoga is here for it. And that might be the main target market, but I don't know if we need to be that direct. So we'll go with that one. And then here we go. Senior friendly yoga classes. That sounds like a better way to introduce the concept. Let's pop that down here. Awesome. And let's make this maybe a heading three and we'll center it. Cool. For the sign up button, let's change this to book your first class. And here we'll say book. And we've got that. And let's make it fit. And we'll stretch it a little bit wider. There we go. Okay. That's beautiful. Now for the services section, these are the services offered. What do you say we use a list section for that? I'm a big fan. All right. Let's add a section. And here we're going to say people. That's where list sections are hiding. We're going to grab this one. There we go. And for edit content, let's hop over to the content. We'll remove these because we don't need all this filler text. I wish we could make a blank list section of Squarespace. If you're watching, that's what we want. All right, let's add some items here. So for this very first one, this is gentle yoga. I'll remove that title and we'll put it at the top here. And let's get rid of the images. We don't need any images here. Just the description is good enough. Then we have chair yoga. Got some details about why chair yoga is great. And again, this is really awesome if your client has just not provided you the info. Let's say they've given you the title of one of their services and one or two sentences, but you need more for your website. This is where ChatGPT can come in so handy. It can help us make all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and add this one. I feel like one of these we're going to want to expand on a little bit more because it's shorter than the others. So we're going to engage with ChatGPT and ask it to write a slightly better version. Okay, let's add this last one here. This is it, community events. That's one of the services offered. Eh, we'll go ahead and add it there. I guess it makes sense. I don't know why it doesn't want to copy that. Let's try one last time. Here, I'm going to open up a notepad to clear any formatting that's on there. There we go. Little pro tip for you. I don't know why it doesn't want to paste it for me. That's really annoying. I guess we shouldn't add community events. Is that the lesson that we should learn here? <laughs> yep. And Katie said, no more lorem ipsum. Finally, it's over. We can use filler text that our audience will actually resonate with. How awesome is that? Okay. Now looking at the design here, I'm going to set this up for a simple list so we can see all four at once. And we'll go ahead and make it a card and we'll increase the text size a little bit. Let's go ahead and decrease the padding of the card, but over here inside the size and space, I want the layout to be full and the space between items to be kind of small. And let's go ahead and make them all equal height. Okay, now this went into gentle yoga. This is a slightly shorter sentence than everything else. Let's see if ChatGPT can rewrite it for us. Add a little more context to this yoga. Gentle yoga class description. There we go. Okay, that's way too long. So let's have it shorten that to two sentences. Shorten that last response. <laughs> there we go. Shorten that last response to two sentences. Here's a shortened version. Oh, beautiful. Rolling with it. How easy was that? You see what I'm talking about when it comes to interacting with this bot? It took me about a month to realize this isn't just Google. This is where I can really engage with it. And now we have a great list here. Let's go ahead and give a title to this section. And the title is going to be what you'll find at Yoga Studio. All right. Let's change up the design too. How about we give it a little bit of a color? We'll edit the section and we'll switch it up. Maybe we'll try this light color. 
or how about this one? Yeah, we'll go with that light gray. I like that color. Maybe in the dark. Let's mix it up. All right, that really stands out. And I realized I had a typo in the title. Too many capital letters. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Do you think we should add a call to action button here? I think so. Let's hop into elements. We'll add a button. And for the button, we can say, book your first class. And we'll add this to book for that URL. There we go. Okay, we've got some great content in our homepage here. We've got the title. We've got the services. What else? We've got an about section here. Let's see about this yoga studio, our mission, our values. All of this looks great. And then a contact us. Let's go ahead and pop this in there. And then we'll move on to the next thing because I want to save some time for Q&A here. Obviously, you can see it might take a little bit longer than an hour to build an entirely amazing website. But holy guacamole, are we getting some awesome content in here? Am I right? All right, let's see here. We've got an about section that's already pre-designed in Squarespace. Got some FAQs and all of this stuff. Let's go ahead and use, eh, we'll just do a blank one. I'm too excited about this. We'll do a blank one. Let's add some text. Not a button, wrong button. There we go. Adding a little bit of text. Let's go ahead and pop in the about blank at the studio, all of this stuff. Ooh, I know, our mission. That's a great place to start for a homepage, right? Let's pop that in there. Now, I feel like with my perfectionism and tendencies, I could be sitting here easily for like another three hours to build the rest of this website. But as I'm sure you can imagine, there are a lot of different things for us to elaborate on here. A lot of different ways we can use AI to generate this filler content for our clients. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this background here so it stands out a little bit more. Lots of fun stuff that we can do here. So scrolling back up, I want to look at some of the other prompts I wanted to go through. I've got prompts for an about page, prompts for a services page, blog post ideas is one of my favorite. Let's go ahead and hop into here. We won't add it to Squarespace, but I want you to see how easy it is to use this to generate content for your Squarespace site. I'm going to say generate 10 yoga related writing prompts. Let's see, for a blog that will be read by senior citizens interested in taking their first yoga class I never type when someone's watching and i've got like 90 of you watching right now <laughs> there we go check it out we've got 10 prompts to send to our client now this is awesome let's have it expand on one specifically for a blog post so we've got this one right here create a blog post intro paragraph for this this and this or blog post outline article on topic that provides 10 tips for this. This is a great one. Let's use this blog content post right here. We can say create a blog article on senior yoga that provides 10 tips for senior citizens and encourages them to book their first class, right? One sub headline and three to five sentences for each tip, write in a, write in a calm, happy and fun style. Let's see what it comes up with. 10 tips for senior citizens. Embrace the joy of yoga and book your first class today. Now, this is something I wanted to point out to you if you've ever used ChatGPT before. Do you remember when we asked it for our homepage, it said discover the joy of yoga? Because we're still using the same prompt here. We're still engaging and having this conversation. It's going to start reusing terms. You see Joy of Yoga again? Look at that. Now, if we want it to stop using that, we can say, don't use term Joy of Yoga anymore, and it will remove that from its content. But the amount of learning that it's doing, it said, hey, I wrote this before, and they used that prompt and kept asking questions. Let's use it again. It's helping us already identify a brand voice by creating this content for us. This entire blog post is just written. How freaking cool is that? Now, I do recommend going through it with a fine tooth comb or reviewing it with your client. But if your client wants help generating a blog post, or maybe you want to make one for your own website, you can use all kinds of different prompts to have ChatGPT help you with it. So here inside the prompt guide, I've got 11 different prompts about blogging. If we scroll down here, different ones about captivating stories, 10 frequently asked questions, lots of ideas for you to explore. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to keep adding to this document all the time because as I'm using it in my own business, I'm discovering a ton. <laughs> okay, so we talked a lot about content. I don't want to steal all your time because I want to make sure I have time to answer questions. But I did want to mention a few other key things. Using it for metadata is so helpful. We're talking SEO title, SEO description. Using it for SEO suggestions like 
Maybe your client wants to improve the search engine optimization for their brand new website. You can ask it for effective link building strategies. Let's give this one a try and see what happens. Link building strategies for a yoga studio website. I think I spelled that correctly. There we go. Studio. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't see exactly what I'm typing right now. I can only see it after I write it. There we go. Okay. Targeting the senior citizens in Chicago. And how can I build high quality backlink profile? Let's see what it says. Local business directories, collaborate with organizations, guest blogging. Now let's go ahead and take one of these examples right here. Write an informative, engaging guest blog post. How about we actually ask it to do that? We can say write an informative and engaging guest blog post for yoga related websites that cater to the senior citizen community of health and wellness niche include, and we'll just remove this part. Let's see, because we're going to do that. What's it going to write for us? Here we go. We've got a head, we have an actual blog post that we can send to other content, all kinds of cool stuff. Nicole asked a question about the Notion cheat sheet. If you head on over to inside the square.co forward slash try AI, there you can sign up for my workshop next Friday and get instant access to this cheat sheet. I'm going to be adding to it over time, but I know you're going to want to play with it right away. So that's going to be in the first email that you get. You'll get access to that cheat sheet when you sign up for the workshop. That's inside the square.co forward slash AI. You'll get access to the database right away. So much fun stuff to play with. All right. So we've got all kinds of cool content there, but there's one other thing I wanted to mention when it came to images and brand design. This part I thought was pretty interesting, thinking about website images. I want to have some background images for this Yoga Studio website. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this prompt in a chat GPT, and I'm going to ask it to give me three examples of search queries I can use to search for background images for a Yoga Studio website. Let's see what it says. Okay, pretty generic. Um, expand on that response for senior citizens. I don't know why I can't type when anyone's watching, but I think y'all are with me on that. Let me know in the comments if you also struggle to type while someone's watching. <laughs> okay, cool. So senior friendly yoga studio background images, that could work. Let's go ahead and select edit section. We'll go to background and get ready to have your mind blown. We're going to browse the stock images from Unsplash and see what it has to share. Okay, we've got some good yoga studio images. These look great. All right, we've got yoga there. Let's see. I kind of like this one for a background for the studio. What do you say? Let's add that image and see what happens. That looks pretty good. It's going to keep loading. I'm going to have a sip of water really quick. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and increase the overlay opacity so we can see our text a little bit better. And why don't we change the alignment of these to the left, scoot them over a scotch, uh, change the alignment of this text to the left. There we go. And change this button alignment. Didn't have to click that far. Over to the left. And we'll scoot that a bit so we can see more of the person practicing. And let's go ahead and make the height of that section smaller. Awesome. Now we have a background image that is helping us generate it. Patty just asked about playing with image generation too. Absolutely. I've had a lot of fun with that. I've been using chat GPT for language based prompts that I can give things like unsplash to find an image for the background of a website. But I've also been exploring Adobe Firefly. I might do another video about that. I'm really excited to talk about it. So very exciting. So heading back here. Um, Golnar just asked about a link. I'll make sure I'll get it to you, Golnar. Don't worry about it. You're covered. All right. So we've got some cool prompts there for image design. And again, as I'm exploring and adding to this, there are going to be a lot more because that's a really fun thing to explore. But before we wrap this up and open it up for questions, I did want to mention some important things here. Terms of service and project proposals. I've got some terms and condition prompts in here. Now, to be super duper clear, this is not legal advice. You should consult a representative in your area when talking about legal advice, but these are ideas that you can use to generate an outline or a supplemental terms of service that you can use to encourage your client to actually create one. So you can definitely use this as a starting off point. I strongly recommend getting legal advice from someone who can represent you in your area, but it's a good idea to think about privacy policies in terms of conditions and how AI can create one for you. So pretty exciting stuff. Now, last but not least, I also wanted to mention project proposals and client sales email series. This is for my Squarespace designers. 
So let's say we put together this website. We want to share it with our audience. We can literally have ChatGPT write one for us. Now, if I keep this conversation here, it's going to be aware that I'm talking about a yoga studio for senior citizens in the Chicago area, joy of yoga, all of that stuff. So I can create a proposal at the end of all of this where it's going to remember what it's talked about before. Hello again, Ripley. <laughs> you can always clear your conversations and have it start from scratch, but I strongly recommend asking for a proposal at the end of the process. So if you pop this in here and enter it, it's going to say, here's the proposal. It's going to have all of this awesome stuff for you, project timeline and cost, design and development, edits, content images. In this prompt, you can add things like what your additional services are, how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost. But you can have ChatGPT fill in those blanks and really inspire you. So if you ever think about creating a client proposal and you're just drawing a straight blank like I used to do, this can help fill in the gaps. It is so super helpful. All right. And last but not least, client email series. It can write those for you as well. If you're subscribed to my emails, you might have noticed I've been getting a lot more, um, I guess you could say jovial lately, a lot more expanded in some of my content. I've been using ChatGPT to help me with my content, and it's been amazing. So one last thing I want to mention about the email content or about expanding upon any of these things don't be afraid to ask it to rewrite stuff. That stuff is really, really important. And it's a great technique that you can use to get the most out of chat GPT. We had it do that for this gentle yoga description, which was awesome. But you can ask it to rewrite or reconstruct anything or expand upon something. So for this example right here, let's say we want it to expand on the design edits. We can say expand on the design edits aspect of the last response. Keep the content clear, engaging, and exciting. Make it happy and include an emoji. Let's see what it does. Smiley face design edits. Oh, look, it gave us three emojis. Well, that's fun. Four, five, six emojis. Very exciting. So again, remember, it's talking about yoga studio. It's remembering the last conversation that we had. So have it designed the actual proposal for you at the very end of it. So very exciting stuff. All right. I know in the list there, I said we're going to design an entire Squarespace site using chat GPT. And technically, we did design an entire layout. We've got our navigation. We've got our colors. We've got our fonts. And at this part, it's really just filling in all the blanks of grabbing the additional information. Now, using Squarespace here, if this is all I wanted, just like one quick page that has a book now button, let's say I have an external booking that I have listed here, or I'm listening to like maybe a mind body example, and I can just integrate that. I can literally create anchor links on this single page and call this website done. I can link to this as our services. I can link to this as our about us, and then maybe have that contact form and we're finished. This website could be complete. Should we go ahead and do it? Should we just finish this website right now? I think we should. Okay. I'm seeing a yes, we're going to do it. Let's throw in a contact form. Let's see, how about this contact form? And for this image, let's do another image prompt. Let's take a look at our images and brand design prompts here. Um, let's see, provide keywords that would be suitable. Here we go. For background image that would be suitable for a yoga studio website. That is for senior citizens in Chicago. We want the images to be calm and focused on a gray and teal color scheme. There we go. Change focus so it's spelled correctly. And let's see what it comes up with us for us. Okay. How about this one? Calm yoga studio backgrounds. Let's see what we can find from Unsplash. Might be pretty similar to what we had before. No, we've got a little bit different here. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Calm Yoga Studio background. I kind of like these serene ones here with the, the lily and the water. I like it. Let's go ahead. Oh, this one has teal in it, though. And teal is one of our colors. How about we use this one? We've got a little bit of teal with the sky in the background there. People practicing yoga. I love it. That's our new image. We've got that. And what did it recommend for our contact form? Let's see here. We had a contact form. And what it recommended was name, email, phone, message, and submit. We wanted to change this to get in touch to keep it a little casual. Let's hop back here into our Squarespace website. And instead of submit, we're going to say keep in touch or get in touch. There we go. And now we have the contact form. 
So if we wanted to add anchor links to this site, we can technically say we just finished a yoga studio website created entirely by ChatGPT. How freaking cool is that? Doesn't look too shabby if you ask me. All right, so we've talked about prompts. We've talked about engaging. Let's go back here. Be clear, be specific, be playful. Ask again and again and again. Don't forget that you can keep this conversation going and it is an AI language model that is always learning. It's going to learn what you've asked, learn what you've liked, learn what you wanted to expand upon. It's going to start using the same terms. It's going to understand if you ask it to be clear and concise, but excited and friendly and use an emoji, it's probably going to do that in a lot of the future responses. It's super exciting to see it learn real time live in action while you're using it. So I strongly recommend you to focus on those four areas. Okay. Awesome. Now Q and A time. Use the chat box, ask me anything about creating a Squarespace website using AI. I am going to scroll through here really quick, see what we've got. I'm gonna grab a sip of water before I lose my voice. Awesome. Okay, talked about image generation with Patty and another question about using Midjourney. I have explored Midjourney a little bit and I definitely like it from a UX UI standpoint, but to be honest, I thought it was a little overwhelming for this level of workshop. What I wanted to focus on was, as far as imagery is concerned, was creating prompts that we can use to just pull from the Unsplash database. I want to create a sample layout. Like, let's say your client sends you the content they want. They know they want these five pages. They know that this is the about paragraph for their studio, and they send you their class schedule. And you're like, okay, I'm going to make this website, but they don't have any images for you to use. Or maybe the images that they send you were ones taken with an iPhone six years ago that are maybe 720 like not high quality images. Using the prompts that we have in ChatGPT, we can use those prompts to say, hey, what can I search on an image database to give me some content? I also uh, like using some of the other, like Adobe Firefly to create things like patterns and textures. That's been a lot of fun. Adobe Firefly can do some cool things. Let's go ahead and open that one up really quick. So Adobe Firefly has a lot of really cool options too. Again, I wanted to focus on ChatGPT here, but we can do text to image and text effects. Both of these have been a lot of fun. Now, if you go in here to generate an image, um, let's just, let's do an image here. Let's say pattern background of teal and gray for a website. Let's see pattern background of teal and gray. Here, you can actually change the aspect ratio to maybe landscape, for example, and you can select some of the different styles, color and tone and lighting. It really does a lot better when you give it more prompts about content, but it can create some neat things. So here we just have some unique patterns. Maybe you'd want to pull this pattern or this one and just add a little opacity so it's not so drastic. But this could be a great pattern right here. We can also use it for, um, let's say, a uh, simple iconography, maybe create a set of icons for a yoga studio. Let's see, set of three icons, simple line icons for a yoga studio. Let's see what it comes up with. All right, uh, Shannon just asked if I've used it to rename images for SEO power. And absolutely, Shannon, I totally have. Okay, these are terrible. We're not gonna use these icons, but it's just an example of some ideas. Maybe that one would be better for Mid Journey and not Adobe Firefly. It's a terrible example. I still like to use Firefly for other things though. Let's throw that out there. So uh, hopping into Shannon's question, absolutely. And I've got that in the SEO prompt tab here. So I have prompts for research, strategy, meta, and a whole set of prompts for alt tags. So this right here you can use for alternative tags that can be optimized for search engines and keywords as well as users. ChatGPT will understand that if you're asking for an alt tag that is written for accessibility but also to improve search engine rank, it's going to know what to do. So again, that's the SEO section here. You'll find meta-based tags. You're going to find alt tags, strategy-based question prompts, and research-based prompts, all kinds of cool stuff for, to, for you to uh, use to inspire some of your SEO activities. I hope that's really helpful. All right. Hopper Vision asked if it's important to divulge to paying clients that AI was used in the creation of content. Strongly recommend it. I absolutely do. As you can tell, I am not shy about talking about how much I love to use AI. And I think it's really good for them to know that is something that we're doing. We are absolutely using it to create content. And one thing that I want to add to that. I remember from my years of being a designer, one of the biggest pain points was getting content from my clients. <laughs> Little known fact, 
I actually used to use the lyrics to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song as filler text instead of lorem ipsum. Because if I was working with a business, like for example, I was working with a plastic surgery studio and they were actually based in Los Angeles and it said West Philadelphia born and raised on their homepage, you better believe they were going to send me a different headline pretty quickly. <laughs> I know that's really silly, but that's totally what I used to do. So on that note, when your client is not sending you the content that you need, you can tell them, hey, I wasn't getting that information. So I used AI to generate some filler text. I strongly recommend you look at it and make sure it matches the tone of voice or your brand and be comfortable updating that content so it truly reflects your unique style. Totally add that disclaimer. Now that was just off the top of my head, but I bet you chat GPT can write one for you if you give it a good prompt. Should we try it? Let's do it. Okay, let's say write an email to encourage my website client to review the content for their new homepage that I generated with AI. Keep this email simple, concise, and friendly. And again, can't spell live. Oh my gosh, there we go. Simple, concise, and friendly. There we go. I hope this email finds you well. Look at that chat bot just representing all of us for a minute. How many times have we read that email before, right? So take a look at this and we can say, rewrite that email to be more casual. Let's try that one because that wouldn't be my voice. Maybe that's your tone of voice. That's not what I would do. Hope you're doing well, exclamation point. I'm stoked. Okay, that's how I would write it. I grew up in California and I say stoked way more than an adult should. All right, there we go. So that's a good example. I hope that helps answer your question. Um, Hopper Vision, I hope that was useful. I strongly recommend divulging that you have used AI to help you with your content. Don't be afraid to mention it and encourage them to use it too, especially the free ones. Awesome. Tia says she loves the prompt cheat sheet. I'm so glad you do. Definitely glad Shannon is on board with sharing it to clients. Same with Sarah, using this to encourage them to create content. I love it. Awesome. I hope you found this helpful. We're running out of time. I wanted to limit this to one hour. Uh, next steps, get the prompts, join the workshop. I'd love to help you out with more of these. And if you're not quite ready for that, just explore chat GPT. That's your number one job today. I want you to really hop around in there and play with it. See what kind of cool stuff it can create. Keep these, these little tips in mind right here, okay? Be clear. Try and be as clear as possible. Be specific. Be playful. And ask it again and again and again. So I had someone just ask, how do I get the prompt cheat sheet? It's at insidethesquare.co forward slash try AI. If you sign up for the workshop, that cheat sheet access will be emailed to you the instant you sign up for it. The workshop is going to be next Friday. If you can't attend live, that's cool. I'm going to record it and send you a link to watch the recording. It's going to be listed here inside the cheat sheet as well. I'll go ahead and close that. Our workshop info is going to be posted in here. A link is going to be added on the 14th. The actual email is going to be, or the workshop replay will be added here. But to get access to all of these prompts that will be added to constantly, constantly updated this Notion cheat sheet, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash try AI. Super fun stuff to play around with. So uh, Jean just asked, how will the workshop be different? This was focused on content creation for websites. The workshop is going to be focused on your workflow, focused on how you can use this content and use chat GPT and other AI programs for your business. We're going to be talking about how you can use it for attracting clients, for social media, for time management, for resources, for newsletter ideas, for optimizing your own website. There are lots of things that you can do as a business owner to use it. So while this was focused on website creation and using chat GPT to generate websites, I want to help you with the workflow aspect of it too. And as always, I'm doing it through the lens of using Squarespace. Squarespace is my jam. So Automate and Innovate Workshop, we're going to be talking about revolutionizing the way that you work with Squarespace and the way that you run your business using AI. So we're going to be talking about bridging the gaps, creating prompts and getting ideas, but streamlining your to-do list, optimizing your own website, all kinds of different ways that you can leverage AI to improve your business. So that's the difference. So if you just want the prompt cheat sheet, that's still available too. Grab that inside the square.co forward slash try AI. And when you're ready to dig into more about how it can help you and your workflow, that's when the workshop next Friday is going to be even more important. Lots of fun stuff. So I hope you found this helpful. I just ran over the hour mark, so I better call it before this program that I'm using kicks me off. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It was really exciting to do this live. I really hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, if you have a question, comment below. Head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash try AI. And thank you, Sarah. Give me a like before you go. You're so good at these reminders. I appreciate you so, so much. All of you who joined me live, thanks for being here. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're excited. Even if you don't grab the prompt cheat sheet, start creating your own. Make yourself a Google Doc or a Notion Doc and start typing some content in there. I want to encourage you to really engage with this AI. It's learning from what we're teaching it. So hop in there, be creative, interact with it. It's not just a Google search for ideas. It's a conversation that you're having with an artificial intelligence bot. This artificial intelligence bot takes information from around the web and wants to help you be the best that you can be at your job or whatever you're asking it to help you with. So definitely start that conversation. And again, I focus today on using ChatGPT. There are tons of different AI bots out there or open language models. Um, ChatGPT, you can go to chat.openai.com to sign up for it. It's currently free. They do have a plus version, but I've just been using the free version and I adore it. Jasper is also a great program and Canva has magic, right? I think Notion has an AI as well. Lots of cool stuff. ChatGPT is a great place to start. I hope you love this. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to hop offline. That's it. Most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website.